HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. And by Compass at Hopkinton, offering innovative programming that treats the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in a caring, secure residential setting. More at compasshopkinton.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On today's newscast, Sky's the Limit shows off the newly renovated middle school courtyard. The Real Housewives of Hopkinton shop for a cause. We have the highlights from a terrific Thanksgiving football game between Ashland and Hopkinton. And concerns are addressed about the West Main Street School Street intersection. But first, Toys for Tots is back and you can make a difference for a child by donating. Uh, hi, I'm Mike Whalen. Uh, I'm with the uh, Metro West Marine Corps League. And today we're kicking off our Toys for Tots drive here at the Hopkins Police Department. Uh, we brought a box here uh, every year for many years now, and the people of Hopkins have been very generous uh, filling up this box and many others and for toys to be distributed amongst the people in Middlesex and Essex County. Uh, the, uh, Every year, it seems there's always more and more a demand for toys uh, all throughout the region, and not necessarily in, in the city, in the city, but also in the uh, suburban towns too. Uh, Carolyn, sure. Yeah. Well, thanks, Mike. It's great to be here. And one of the great things about this season with the holidays is um, the satisfaction you get from giving to others, and it really is the season of giving. And Hopkinton has always been so so generous. Um, with so many great causes, every age from children to adults, and this is a really great cause that's been around for almost 50 years now. You know, donating um, toys to local children and supporting our neighbors, and the sense of community that comes from supporting our neighbors and our friends, especially those in times of need during tough times, uh, is really something that we're known for here. And so I know that this box is going to be very full very soon right. uh, thanks to the efforts of Mike and the league and so many local residents who care so thank you and I'll look forward to seeing you down here at the station thank you uh, thanks Mike Carolyn, okay. and uh, you know this is my first year here for the holiday season at HPD but this is a long-standing tradition and it's a it's a great uh, for a great cause and I'm certainly uh, proud to help out in any way we can here at the HPD and uh, that's all I got to say. All right, that's great. Uh, we collected toys until the uh, 19th of December, uh, so we'll try to get in for that so we can get them out to where they belong by the Christmas Eve. Thank you. You can drop your unwrapped toy donations at the front lobby of the Hopkinton Police Station until Friday, December 19th. Sky's the Limit, which is the organization formed for the Middle School Courtyard Project, held a presentation about the progress of the courtyard and what will come of the project. HCAM News was on the scene. Sky's the Limit hosted a presentation and showed off the new middle school courtyard. Student Ambassador Madison McDougall was kind enough to show HCAM News around the renovated courtyard. You could look through the windows and see the courtyard. Mm -hmm. It was quite ugly. Like, right. I didn't like to see this. And so, then they cleaned this out, which now it's a lot more pretty. And so now you can do all the, these classes here. And so it's actually a good part for vitamin D. And it's a little cold right now because it's like 7 o'clock. So I like, so that's what I like about it. And we're just going to be adding just a couple stuff to make it educational. And so it's going to be like pretty with like trees everywhere. Like a lot of what, like Mr. Gundes, the leadership teacher, would love to do this. And um, it's just Borges, which is the energy and environment teacher, would love to do this because it's like energy and solar heat, sunlight, which is, and then there's like grass and everything. So that could be that. So that is, so that is the student point of view why we should have it, not like the teachers and like everybody else, even though their point of view is great. But I think you should hear from the students who go here. So I really like how it's cleaned out and pretty. And so we would use it probably about September. K 
can't really do it in the winter, it's too cold. And then like warm it up until the end of the year. So nice. yeah, the courtyard. And so the bricks will go right along there. Where the cement is, will go right, right along there. I then talked to middle school assistant principal Mary Ellen Grady about the Sky's the Limit project. She also introduced me to Nora Bonnell and Hannah Murphy, two Hopkinton students who are heavily invested in helping the project. The project Sky's the Limit started, um, it started a long time ago when I came into Hopkinton Middle School as an English teacher and I used to eat lunch in the corner of the library and I would look out the window and we had this big space with um, totally unused and I would dream about bringing my classes out there just thinking about how nice it would be to um, be reading poetry or doing a writing assignment under the you know beautiful sunshine and fresh air and I kept asking everyone can we is there any way we can do something with this and the answer that I got was no you can't there's nothing to be done and then I became assistant principal and I asked Alan Keller, who was my principal at the time, I said, do you think I could do something with the courtyard? And he said, go for it. So I created the school climate committee. And on that school cl climate committee, we originally started with just teachers and we brainstormed the idea for this. It's more than just a courtyard. But um, we also had a school, a student school cli climate committee. And in addition to that, I had um, students that really heard about it and became really excited about it. This is Hannah Murphy, who is a freshman at the high school. This is Nora Bonnell, who is also a freshman at the high school. And Nora had written that she asked for her birthday, instead of having gifts, she would like a donation to the sky's the limit. So people gave what they would have given um, in cash or in checks, and that went to the sky's the limit. So she gave a very generous donation that was really from her heart, and I think that just speaks to what this is about. Excellent. Now, what made you two so invested in this project? Um, well, I've always been really close to Mrs. Grady ever since sixth grade, and when she introduced the project to me, I just thought it was a great idea, and I think that it's a really awesome way to get students to learn in a different way and in a different environment. Well, with the extra money we had from playing Pache, and we had to like decide what we wanted to do with it, and we thought it would just be like a great way to remember Shane by buying a brick. You can catch more of the Courtyard presentation airing soon on HCAM News Focus. Check the schedule on our website, hcam.tv, for details. HCAM is currently looking for photos from around the community to display on our homepage. If you have a cool photo of something Hopkinton related, please email me at news at hcam.tv. Currently, if you email in a photo we can use, we'll give you a limited edition HCAM 10th anniversary 24 ounce Tervis tumbler, perfect for coffee. Still a lot more to come on HCAM News, including concerns about a major intersection. We revisit a terrific Hiller's win on Thanksgiving and much more. HCAM News will be right back. Welcome back to HCAM News. Owner of Angels Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, is a witness to the daily happenings of the West Main Street School Street intersection as it is right near his shop. Jeff was happy to see the installment of a light at the intersection, but still had some concerns. Angels Garden Center, located near the intersection of West Main Street to Carlo Road and School Street, has undergone numerous renovations in recent months, including a new stoplight, repaving, and various other road fixes, but concern has been expressed by a few about the current stoplight system and road format. Jeff Doherty, owner of Angels Garden Center, is one of the concerned members of the community. I'm Jeff Doherty from Angels Garden Center. I've lived here my whole life. Um, and so they're almost complete with the construction on the intersection, but we still have a couple of issues that have been brought to the Board of Selectmen 
have been sent to the town manager, have been vetted through John Westerling, the DPW director, but they have not been addressed to completion. One of those is the timing of the light for the residents who live on School Street. And what happens is anyone that's moving in a northbound direction from School Street trying to make a right turn onto West Main has an easy access because when their light turns green, they're able to go. But the folks who live on the other side of the intersection on the north side of School Street who would like to make a left-hand turn, who paid for the light a half a million dollars, they are at a disadvantage because they do not get a clear direction. And a simple fix would be a five second delay in the green light for this side of School Street. We've asked the Board of Selectmen this. The town manager has instructed the DPW director to follow through and make the changes, and those changes have not been made. The simple fix is the black box that we see in the background. That box has a computer chip in it that changes the timing on the light. An electrical engineer needs to come in, tweak the timing so that the folks on the north side of School Street could make a left turn and head towards the center of town. The other two issues are the stop lines in the road. That stop line is so far forward that if somebody wanted to take a left-hand turn onto School Street coming up West Main, they would not be able to because there would be a car stopped there at the red light. The second issue is the stop line on West Main Street where there would be a right turn onto School Street going in the north direction. That is so far into the intersection that if somebody wanted to take a turn that had a truck or a landscaping trailer, they would not be able to negotiate that turn because the radius is too tight. Um, so you've seen a lot of accidents around here because of those problems. Prior to the light, prior to the intersection changes, we were good for one major accident a month. And I think the light is going to help that. It's going to help direct traffic at the right timing. Because it's all about timing when you're moving through a busy intersection. Now, have you had uh, any customers that have experienced uh, getting in a car accident coming up to this intersection? Not as of yet. Not as of yet. Not since they've put the light in. Right, but it's certainly a concern with the way the stop lines are and and uh, the, the light right now. Yes, and everything that we've talked about are easy fixes. They're smart, they're sitting back, but technically if that guy came up to that yellow line and this Jeep wanted to make that turn because his lane is over there, he wouldn't be able to do that because that car would be in the way. Right. And then the other problem is, is like this big truck that's coming down. If he wanted to make a left turn onto West Main and somebody was parked at the stop line, he'd never be able to negotiate the turn. Director of Public Works, John Westerling, was happy to address Jeff's concerns and appreciated the feedback. After owner of Angels Garden Center, Jeff Doherty, expressed concerns about the West Main Street School Street intersection, where the shop is located, John Westerling of the Department of Public Works addressed the concerns. He spoke of the issue expressed by Mr. Doherty about the timing of the light at the intersection and said the problem will be addressed. I already had a conversation with Jeff and um, we concur, we being the town, that there should be a modification made to the timing for that southbound traffic off of School Street. And we've actually coordinated with our engineer who has made the design change. And we expect to have the electrician out there either tomorrow or early next week to make those necessary changes. John Westerling also spoke about the stop lines and told HCAM News they will be moved. Yeah, and again, I've had conversations with, uh, with Mr. Doherty, and we had identified that as an issue beforehand, and we had identified the area where those stop bars should be. 
the contractor painted them in the wrong spot, so we are uh, in contact with the contractor to relocate those, to move those back uh, easterly so that it will allow the folks that are traveling southerly on School Street to take that left onto West Main Street without there being any vehicles impeding that turn and movement. In summary, Jeff, Jeff and I have had uh, many conversations on, on this project. Jeff has been great. He's been our our uh, eyes in the field, and he lives that every day. So he's aware of what's going on out there. Um, so he and I have had multiple conversations on this, and we've talked about those two very specific uh, options, and we are going to make changes along those same lines. In the 91st Thanksgiving meeting between the Ashland Clockers and the Hopkinton Hillers, it was a snowy, wet field, which led to a defensive battle. It was a terrific game played by both teams. Here are the highlights. Hopkinton and Ashland met on Thanksgiving morning for the 91st time in the home of the Clockers. Snow fell through the previous night into the morning making the field a sloppy wet mess which meant for a very defensive game first drive of the game pat ryan eludes a couple of defenders and completes to hayden pereira who was forced out of bounds at around the ashland 45 yard line then a few plays later jay keller at quarterback pat ryan spread to the left pat ryan catches the football the Ashland defense stepped it up, however. Drew Donahue stuffed here for a loss. Then Jay Keller sacked. The Clockers defense get the job done and keep the game scoreless. On Ashland's possession, quarterback Mitch Porter finds Philip Cooper under pressure. And Cooper turns on the Jets and breaks into Hiller's territory. Colin Hanrahan then sets up Ashland nicely within the Hillers 20 yard line heading to the second quarter. Ashland keeps the charge going with this great catch by Max Feinberg. He says he was in bounds and so does the official a first and goal for Ashland. Then a Hopkinton pass interference call sets up this Mitch Porter touchdown to make it a six to nothing game. A Joe Kirkak extra point put the clockers up seven with 816 left in the first half. After the Ashland touchdown, both defenses went back and forth, forcing punts. But then in the fourth quarter, Pat Ryan goes to Matt Decina here for the first down. And then later in the drive, Pat Ryan connects with Matt Decina for the touchdown. Hillers, an extra point away from tying the game. Problem was, they were still an extra point away from tying. The Hillers said, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Let's go for the conversion. Ryan takes a snap and throws it incomplete. 6.56 left to go in the game. Ashland up on Hopkinton, 7-6. The Hillers then go for the onside kick, but Ashland scoops it up and has the football with great field position. Ashland moved the chains a couple times, but the Hillers' defense bent but did not break. They forced the turnover on downs. Hillers get the ball at their own 30 with 2.24 left to go in the game. Keller to Pat Ryan. Oh, off of Ryan's hands, and the Clockers have the interception. Ashland has a chance to end it here with just a first down. All they need is about a yard, but oh no, Colin Hanrahan jumps and pushes the Clockers back five. Clockers here for the knockout punch, and it's incomplete. Hillers get the ball back. Drew Donahue takes a little pass here, and some good footwork leads to the Hillers first down. Keller then has a big completion of Pat Ryan. Hillers get quickly back to the line. Keller this time finds Pereira inside the 10 yard line and the Hillers are in business. A flag pushed the Hillers back so now it was about a 31 yard field goal try for Adam Giordano. This is for the lead. Snap, spot, kick. And it's going to be... And it's good! 9-7 Hopkinton with not a lot of time left. Hillers kick off and Ashland is hoping for a miracle. Lateral followed by lateral, but Hopkinton special teams come through and secure the 9-7 victory. The Hillers finish the season 5-6, and six, Ashland 6-5. Six and five. Congratulations on a great season to the 2014 Hopkinton Hillers team. 
and a Thanksgiving win against the Ashland Clockers. The Real Housewives of Hopkinton hosted Shopping for a Cause to benefit Project Just Because, a nonprofit organization which aims to help all in need. The event took place at Golden Pond, and many were on hand to get some early Christmas shopping done while helping a great cause. The Real Housewives of Hopkinton hosted Shopping for a Cause at Golden Pond's new independent living dining room. Many vendors participated in the event, which served to benefit Project Just Because. The event was also co-sponsored by the Hopkinton Chamber of Commerce and Yummy Mummy Brownies. Many came to do shopping as well as Christmas gift buying. Refreshments were also provided and the event was a success for a great cause. Hi, I'm Jennifer Belisi from Golden Pond. We are hosting a charity event tonight for Project Just Because and sponsored by the Real Housewives of Hopkinton. My role is the event coordinator and we are the hosts. I'm Chris Liardi. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing and Sales at Golden Pond. And I'm working with Jen. We're teaming up here to put together this wonderful event tonight. Hi, I'm Shelley Ryan, and I am currently Acting Activities Director as well as Social Coordinator for Golden Pond. And my role tonight is just to help out and serve, make sure everybody has fun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jillian Alfeo. I'm Director of Special Care, Care here at Golden Pond. And I helped set up the event and also did some shopping. <laughs> The Real High Housewives of, um, of Hoppington are actually raising money for a wonderful cause here in town. It's called Project Just Because. There are only six vendors have attended tonight. It's just stores of all different kinds? All local, basic, basically local artists that are here with all different types of things from um, lavender scents to bags to soaps to all, a lot of jewelry, which we've all purchased. So a lot of different organic. organic. So a nice, a nice variety for the 26 vendors that we have. A great turnout for the event. There is a whole lot coming up on our HCAM channels. Here's our promotions coordinator, Courtney, to fill you in with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., holiday traditions are the topic of conversation in Hopkinton Coffee Break. My mother put a tangerine and a walnut in the foot of our oh, stocking. Oh, always. And oh, always. And I was like, you know, and my sister and I would like dump it out, take the orange and the, and the walnut, goes in the fruit ball on the table, right, and then back right. to your bed. The Board of Health was filmed as our meeting of the week, and the meeting will air on Sunday, December 14th at 4.30 p.m. On Monday, December 15th at 7 p.m., Leisha Skye shares her original tunes with the audience and wake up and smell the poetry. On the boat to London, on the bus to New York City, in the car, on the highway, going far, going far. On Tuesday, December 16th at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV and on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. On Wednesday, December 17th at 11 a.m., a USO Christmas, the holiday show honoring our veterans, is back. And at 1 p.m., we bring you an HCAM News Focus that showcases the Sky's the Limit initiative to build a courtyard at Hopkinton Middle School. In a new All About Hopkinton at 8 p.m., Hopkinton's new adult librarian, Heather Bachman, introduces herself to the town. We will be moving to a new space, and that means this is a really good time before we move all those books to make sure we have collections that are really up to date and in good shape, and we aren't porting around any books, you know, on 19 from 1973 on medical treatments or something like that. On Thursday, December 18th at 7 p.m., the school committee will air live on HCAM TV and on our live stream. On Sunday, December 21st at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from December 15th will air. On HCAM Ed, we bring you the HMS Drama Club's presentation of A Midsummer Night's Dream. Check hcam.tv slash education for program dates and times. If you know someone who wants the HCAM Insider delivered to them every week, they can send me an email at Courtney at hcam.tv. Also, Please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, 
Thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including local holiday events coming up. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, send it to me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well.